In Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 38, Jesus gives a series of teachings that basically amount to uh, the obligation for those who follow Jesus to treat strangers or even people that are antagonistic to his enemies as we would our friends. So, for instance, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 39, a part of this teaching, Jesus says, If people slap you on your right cheek, you must turn your left cheek to them as well. And slapping somebody on the cheek in that culture was uh, more of an insult. It was pushing your buttons rather than an act of violence. And so consider a scenario in which um, someone that you're close to, someone you're friends with, you've invested a lot of time with them, you care about them a great deal, uh, they're having a bad time in their life. Lots of things are going wrong. They're under a lot of stress, under a lot of pressure. And it's not unusual in circumstances like that for, for someone to say something or to do something or to push your buttons in a way that they, they wouldn't normally do. And it's also not unusual in that sort of situation for, for those of us who are uh, a loved one to them or a friend with them, have invested in them for us to, to kind of put up with that. To say, you know, I, I know where you're coming from. I know what you're going through. So I'm going to let that slide. And so what Jesus suggests here is that we might treat someone uh, on the street or someone driving down the road, you know, a case of road rage or, or someone that we don't know very well. We might give them the same grace, um, extend them the same, same mercy that we would give to a loved one or somebody who we knew what they were going through. Uh, just after that in Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 41, he goes on to say, he says, when they force you to go one mile, go with them too. And of course, in verse 41, this is a reference back to a, a common law in the Roman Empire where a, a Roman soldier or an official could force you to stop whatever you're doing and carry uh, their, their load, but they could only make you do it for the legal limit of one mile. But if you sit down and you think about it again, there are times where those that we love, those that we are friends with, those we've invested in, they they ask us to do something for them and it ends up being something more than, uh, you, you have to give more than what you were originally intended to do. Uh, we have the phrase, you, you go the extra mile that comes from this text. And so Jesus is saying here, you know, while naturally you would go the extra mile for your friend, for your spouse, for your roommate, for someone you love, he says, I want you to take that same care and concern, the willingness to invest above and beyond uh, for that friend. And I want you to do that for, in this case, your enemy, the Roman occupier who has come into your home, who has uh, made you stop whatever you're doing and made you carry their load. Treat them like you would a friend. And so Jesus closes Matthew chapter 5 with, with this reading. Uh, he encourages us in verse 45 to act as our Father who is in heaven, who, who is in heaven acts. He says, God, our Father, makes the sun rise up on both the evil and the good and sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. And then he says something really interesting for, for the context of what we're doing with me and you this week. He says, if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing? Don't even the Gentiles do the same. Therefore, he says, just as your heavenly Father is complete in showing love to everyone, so also you must be complete. And so he says, if you only love the people who love you back, if you only love the people that are like you, the people who are in your inner circle, he says, you really haven't done anything special. Everybody does that. But the way of the kingdom is loving everyone that you come across, trying to be a blessing in everyone's life, extending the same mercy and grace that you would for a loved one into that situation as well. And so as we're thinking about what that text might mean in our life, I, I think of this scenario that plays out often. Uh, imagine, if you will, two very similar scenarios. Answer these questions, discuss them amongst your family or amongst your circle, your small group, whatever context you're in right now. Uh, scenario one, you're in a restaurant and uh, the service is just bad. You, you don't get refills. You, you have to wait a long time before they come to take your order. Uh, every time you flag the server down, he or she comes over and they say, you know, I'll be back in just a minute and then they never come back. Your food comes out wrong. The service is just horrible. I want you to stop and I want you to think for a second about how you would respond in that scenario with a server that you don't know, that you've never met before. 
after you've discussed that for a few minutes, you might pause the video and kind of go around about what you do in a situation like that. Come back, hit play, and we'll do scenario two. A scenario two is a very similar scenario, except for the details are a little different. You have this, this really good friend who has fallen on hard times, but they finally have found a job, and this job is very important to them. They're going to be a server at a restaurant. And uh, in this scenario, tonight is the night they begin working at the restaurant. They've never had experience in restaurants before. They're kind of learning everything as they go. So you and some of your friends, your family, want to support them, so you go out to the restaurant, you ask the serve or the, the, the greeter to, to place you in your friend's section so that you can support them. Your plan is to maybe leave a big tip for them. But as you get seated and you wait a few minutes for your friend to come by, you notice that things aren't going as well perhaps as, as you would like for them to. Uh, things are really busy. They seem like they might be a little short staff. Your friend is, is still learning the ropes and so you have to wait a few minutes before uh, they come to get your order. You ask how it's going and they, they don't have anything good to say and they don't really have time to talk. They're really struggling with this job and so through the night uh, you have to send your order back a couple of three times maybe if you want to get it right. You don't get as many refills as you would like and, and your friend just doesn't really have time to give you the level of service that you might expect. Okay, so in this scenario, how would you respond to your friend? Maybe in scenario one versus scenario two, how would the behavior, the service that you receive from these two individuals affect your tip? So what I want you to do now as you think about this teaching of Jesus, treat strangers like you would your friends. Turn the other cheek. Refuse to push buttons back when, when somebody is pushing against you. Go the extra mile for the one who's antagonistic to you as well as the one who is close to you. I want you to ask yourself this question. Discuss it amongst your group. Did you treat the server in scenario one differently than you treated your friend in scenario two? And why do you think that is? And what do you think Jesus has to teach us about that? Have a great discussion.